Hi, good afternoon, Burleson Church family. I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday and hope you're excited that we're getting closer to the Sabbath. Had a great meeting this week that I kind of wanted to share a little bit with you about. So we've got a subcommittee that's developing the procedures and the protocols that we feel we need to have in place in order to return return to church safely. And it was a really good discussion. We've got some great ideas and things that we think we can do to help make the return to church uh, as safe for each other and the community as possible. And I don't know about you, but I am really excited for June 6th, that date that we have penciled in the calendar for right now, a date when we're going to be able to meet together. And of course, we need to see and make sure that the numbers of COVID continue to be on the decline here in Johnson and Tarrant County. Uh, We want to make sure that we're being responsible for the safety of each other. Um, And so just know that as we talk about June 6th, we're doing so with, with the utmost of intentions of maintaining safety. Um, but we're optimistic and we're excited, and I know you are too. I'm hearing from a lot of you. We're chomping at the bit to get back, and we miss each other, and that's a really good thing. And this weekend, we're excited about um, as we have a children's church online. Uh, we haven't done that in a while, a youth church. Pastor Orland has got some incredible plans in place, and we have a wonderful guest speaker. And so we know we're going to have a worship service that's going to be both uh, interesting and engaging and, and a blessing for not only our young people, but for even our older kids like myself as well. So we're excited about Church This Sabbath Online. Uh, I also want to just take a moment here to say thank you to many of you. I've gotten a lot of text messages and some phone calls just encouraging me and Melanie and Charlie, our family, um, as we hopefully are finishing up Melanie's um, getting better, her care, and and her just getting well. Tomorrow, if you don't know, tomorrow morning at around 7.30, she's going to be having a surgical procedure on her wound, which is stubbornly not wanting to heal very well. Um, and so I just want to thank you for the many of you who are praying. I want to ask for prayer. Uh, I don't think there's anything more powerful than prayer. Um, God's hand moved in our direction. Um, What can be greater than that when the all-powerful God steps in and does something wonderful and and he hears our prayers. And and so I want to just thank you for what you're doing for us in that regard. And, you know, speaking of of our God and his care for us, I was studying uh, this week and I came across Revelation chapter 6. And in verse 9 through 11, and it caused me to pause for a moment and, and get really excited about who our God is and, and who who Jesus is and, and, and the Holy Spirit and the plan that they have for each of us. This is what the Bible says. It says, when he opened the fifth seal in Revelation 6 verse 9, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. In verse 10, they called out in a loud voice. These are the... the this is, these are the souls of the martyrs. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? And then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. Well, I mean, that doesn't sound super optimistic there as that passage ends. But it is. And really, I just want to share with you the joy that I see in this, right? So here's a picture of the souls, the, of, of the martyrs, those who had been persecuted for being followers of Jesus. And we know there was a lot of persecution. And we know in the last days there will be even more persecution for those that, that are followers of Jesus. And so these, these souls, they, they're symbolically crying out to God, asking for justice. They're asking, how long are we going to have to wait until you avenge us? And that's, that's really something we want, isn't it? As we, as we feel hardships of life, as we go through these unjust moments of, of walking on this sin-filled earth, as we experience the biases and the prejudices 
as we experience the hardships like COVID, right? As we go through these things, we, we ask, how long, O oh Lord, must we wait? And and I get their cry. I mean, they're they're crying out because they had they had died for uh, being followers of Jesus. And and here we are, not not necessarily being persecuted because we're believers, but just feeling the 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 effects of living in a sin filled world. But nonetheless, we cry out, how long, O oh Lord? How long must we wait? How long must we endure? And and so many times I feel like I feel like we're it, it, it can feel like we're just crying into an empty chasm. Like we're crying and our prayers aren't heard. And and what I love about Revelation 6 is that reminder that our prayers are heard, that God is hearing those who feel they need justice, who are needing to be avenged. And and look at the, the reply here, right? It says in verse 11 that they were each given a white robe. In other words, they were then covered in the blood of Jesus righteousness. They were given Jesus righteousness, which is in and of itself a great gift. But then they're told to wait a little longer, which isn't something we want, right? We don't want to wait any longer, but they're told to wait longer. In other words, God has an ideal time, an ordained time in which everything will be made right, including what we're experiencing now. If we fast forward in Revelation a little bit, we get to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 1 and 2. And it says, after this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting. You know what they were saying? Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Friends, there is a time coming when God is going to make right all of the wrongs that we've experienced and are experiencing. Not only those who have suffered because they're believers, but who are also just suffering, I believe, because we're in a sin-filled world. These things, the sin, the hurt, the pain, the tears, all that will be made right. Our prayers, our want for justice is not unheard. It is not unnoticed. God hears us. He hears you and he notices you and he's going to make it right. You know, that's my hope. I don't, we don't see the end from the beginning. We don't see the big picture like God does. But if every day we, we cling to the, to the truth that God is in control, that God has got a, a, a way of wrapping this up, that is going to be fair, it's going to be just, and it's going to make things right. If, if our God is going to do that, can we not just take comfort in knowing he will? I tell you what, let's let's share with each other. Pass it on. Share with your neighbor, your friends, your loved ones. When you see them discouraged, distraught, distressed, frustrated, you see them experiencing anxiety, remind them of a God who will make things right. Who in in scripture we're reminded will come through the clouds with a mighty trumpet and the angels and will and will bring all of the righteous home with him. There's a great date waiting in the calendar for each and every one of us. So church, take courage, take joy. God is going to see us through. Remember, Jesus loves you so, so very much. So do I, and we'll see you soon. God bless you.